So we kind of need to just sit down and actually think about what we're needing. My man. Hey boy. I like the window wiper on this. It's huge. It's sleety, miserable, horrible stuff. This. I'm a knife getting these bales going. But... Got a wee party of kids following me this morning. Morning Holly. What a bee. Big break now. This is real working there. Yard number two this morning. I uh, just fed the pigs and uh, Percy, but Percy's been doing a lot of bale of silage, so I'll wait and get one to fill his feeder up. Well, this doesn't look too good. <laughs> ah, sheep! Bandits. Don't really want sheep grazing the wheat. Literally, been out once and back. Put a track in it already. That's where they're meant to be. They're back there now. Away they went. After trailing across here. Anyway, a wee bit of silage. He looks satisfied. Nice and clean. Spotless. Cows are fed up. Kev's just jumping in the vulture. He's been turning a few points around. And so he's done one side, going down the other side, and then he'll head out. An absolute corker of a morning again. Days have been great recently. Dead still, no wind, and dry. Can't beat it. Finished with the pecking block, so I'll get them back up in here in the shed. Bit of a squeeze in here. Ooh, flat rim solid. Safe keeping up there. Just gonna run around to the garage with Kev uh, to pick up that van that we took in a couple of days ago that went for an MOT, so that's ready to come back. That's the egg van gets used to collect all the eggs and Kev uses it to go home sometimes. Van wasn't ready, anyway. One of the shop guys, and um, so he, what does he do? He kind of controls all the stock that comes in, the deliveries that comes in. We got him to do his forklift ticket, so it's quite handy. Um, whenever there's things even taken off lorries or things even moved, we don't need to get a call every single time and take the forklift from wherever it is. Um, Sean there can just jump on it and shift things about if needs be. There it goes. Shut the door here. John Deere. It was good. Right, I'm in the Valtra here, the T154. This is kind of the top, top spec of it. Um, it's got all, quite a lot of bells and whistles. Quick capture. So console and whatnot, steering wheel, whatnot. Uh, dash just sits back there, it doesn't move with the wheel. Just fine, you actually see that a bit more than um, the New Holland the kind of steering wheel gets in the way of that. So no okay case size cab, there's loads of space in behind, um, but not that much width. The cab kind of comes round at the front as well. I wouldn't say it's a big cab. This is your armrest, so this is your smart touch display or whatever you call it. Uh, so it's quite self-intuitive, so you basically go to this image and you can click on whatever you want. So transmission, engine, whatever settings for this. The same at the back end. If you want to jump into your spools, you can set all your spool positions, your flow rates, whatnot. It's fairly simple to use. You can set up different screens with various different bits on them. So that's quite good, quite like that. Not a big fan of this joystick here. Um, it's not that comfortable or you can't, I'd say most tractors you jump into, you just sit down and your your hand finds a position. I mean, in theory, I think that's meant to be a position there, but emergency brake here, which if you ever need to use it, you'll forget where it is because you'll need it that quick. Because normal tractors, you'd have it down here. Handbrake, um, so I'm not sure about that. You'll forget where it was. Hopefully you'd never need it for a start. Um, this is a joystick for the front end works fairly well simple to use no problems there uh, spool valves there's five on the back end of this so there's four um, spools here color coded and then you've got another one here so if you've got a hydraulic top link uh, you'd link it in with this radio controls beacons lights auto steer there's more buttons here you've got four wheel drive uh, diff lock lifting your arms at the back end I can't remember what that is so on the actual arm mess you've got your up and down for your link arms up the gears forward and backwards but can't really figure that out too well um programmable buttons m1 m2 m3 
so you can set into whatever you want in your smart touch screen here. Wee cubby box here, put your phone in there, bit of storage space, and then a big cubby, oh no, it's the fridge in there. Fridge with a switch at the back. I think it's a proper fridge rather than just a cool box, which is quite good. You can, the seat swivels 360 degrees, but with a huge armrest, it doesn't. You just get that much of rotation, which is not great when you want to just swivel around here to be comfortable for the likes of plowing. I mean, normally we're running GPS anyway, so you're not really focused on the steering wheel a whole lot. You just need to turn the wheel, turn the chair and kind of point in that direction as far as you can get. So you've got a kind of comfortable position looking backwards. Um, but this armrest doesn't really allow you to do that, I don't think. Gears and whatnot on the pillar there. Also, it is smooth, it's very smooth. The front end's got two dampeners and uh, air bags as well as the, the whole front end then pivots again further in uh, off of the, the main chassis of the tractor, which makes the front end really smooth, which in turn helps the back end, obviously. Add blue diesel tank, uh, hydraulic level indicator. So the hydraulic oil and the back end oil are different, so there's no con contamination if you've got issue with the brakes. This has got five spools on it, air brakes are standard. But the lift's rated to, I think, a wee bit over nine ton, which is probably the most out of anything we've had. Drawbar in there, not overcomplicated. There's no altercation in uh, the link on here, uh, like another hole to change position. The spools are marked one, two, three, four out here, but it's inside, they're color coded with no numbers. It's a bit confusing. Controls out here, PTO, lift arms, um, you can control the hydraulic link as well with these two if you want. But you can control two. So you control this set, which is these two buttons, and then I think it must just be this set with the other two. That's the plow off there. Okay, we'll get it back onto his tractor today. Right, I'll just take it for a spin along the road, see what it's like. I think it's gonna be smooth anyway, smooth in the fields. Okay, had it for a spin along the road. I can't get used to the gearbox on it. I'm not sure if it's just because obviously I've not spent that much time in it where I'd, I'd figure it out and get it a lot smoother or if it's just because it's brand new because I've only done the tractor's only done maybe like 14 hours so it'll still be quite tight and whatnot so that won't be helping but I, I just can't get used to it. I'm not the biggest fan of it and it doesn't sit too comfortably. Um, the lock on it is by a country mile the best of all the tractors. It turns so tight, what do overall think? Decent tractor, fairly smooth, does the jobs you need it to. It's got all you need to have on the armrest. It's just a bit less refined and a bit less comfortable. And yeah, I don't know. I don't know whether it's just because it's a, quite a bit different to the rest that it's. I'm needing a bit more time on it to get used to it. I don't know if we'd be better off because it's the same dealer that does Valtra and Massey Fent whether we'd be better off if a if a, a, fin, a massey hen feed boy's just away he was in mixing up a load of hen feed this morning right i'll park this tractor up uh, as of monday that barley's getting cleared that's all sold seed barley seed spring barley and uh, so that'll go away to get treated and sold across the country to other farmers and then once that gaps cleared and um, We'll get the malt barley along the road into there because we're going to end up keeping malt barley for quite a while and we'd just rather have it here because it's a nicer place to store it. The bonnet's got steam down the middle, it's like two pieces joined together. We've got no other demos planned, so that is the last demo. Maybe a Massey will turn up. Do you want to send out a Massey, three keys? We'll try one. So we kind of need to just sit down and actually think about what we're needing. Um, we know roughly, but we need to figure out what what the next tractor's going to be doing because have a wee bit of changes because uh, Dunk's retired, so there's different um, kind of jobs on different tractors now going to be happening. So we'll just have a think about what each tractor's going to be doing and work out from there. In the meantime, we'll get quotes for the rough spec of what we're after of each of the. Um, tractors we might consider and um, just to compare look we know the John Deere is going to be the most expensive expecting the class to be second 
um, New Holland Archer. If they're all spec, roughly the same. Coos are wanting some grub. A friend of mine has requested a slow mo of a cow eating a spud. So here it is. This is one of those times I need a knife. I've got to open some bales, but the usual one sitting there. I've just seen a video of. Wink, wink. I've just seen a video of a, a robot combine in Japan. I'll put it in now. My man. Hey, boy. Want some grub? Hey, we porker. They're coming to pick up this Valtron a couple of hours, so I'm going to get it washed. I'm moving the water tank to this side of the shed because it's blown a hilly and it's bolted cold. It takes a life out of you. So we'll get a bit of shelter around here. I like the window wiper on this. It's huge. I don't know how much of that you saw. Could have fallen over a while ago, I'm not sure. It is cold. It obviously fell over pretty early on. Anyway, tractor's clean. Gave that a wee, uh, a wee bit of a clean, get the windows cleared, and a bit of the grime off it. I'm pretty happy with the ammonia treated wheat straw for these cows. I mean, if you look at the bedding just now, they're just pretty much needing bedded again, but. If, you'd, if it was that colour and it was silage, they'd be a right mess. It'd be a lot wetter and it'd stick to their bodies when they're lying down, but there's none of them that are dirty. A wee bit on the front of the joint there where they kind of kneel down a wee bit, but when they lay down in this and stand back up again, they're still clean as anything. Their condition's come up a good wee bit already. Um, see that beast there? Absolutely fine, just at that stage. That kind of condition's what I'm looking for all over. And the majority of them are at that stage. There's a couple of kind of chunky ones which I'll swap out and put over there and they can kind of ease off a bit. Don't want to get them too big. There's only two maybe bigger ones that I need to split off and there's not any scrawny ones. There was a scrawny one over here that I separated to go in with the ones that aren't in calf, so it would beef up a bit. That's it there. It's, it's definitely put on a good bit of condition. It's not far away from being absolutely fine where I want it to be. This is an old workshop bench which we were probably just going to chuck out because it's rotten and a bit goose, but um, girls in the shop use it all the time. It got used a lot in the summer for making up fire arrangements and things like that and now it's going to be used for making wreaths for Christmas time. I wasn't lying earlier when I said it was blowing a hoolie. There's a tree down blocking the road at yard number two, so I have to grab the chainsaw and some chains and whatnot and go and sort that out. Chainsaw oil, it's like syrup, gloopy. Look at it. You fill up this reservoir every single time. You fill up the petrol or the two stroke. So today I'm now gonna be a fully qualified tree surgeon. Uh, and then I'll retire from that hopefully in about an hour's time. How far up this road's the tree gonna be cowed? There was one squint one that we brought down ourselves, which was just at this side. Well, the steep hill's clear, that's good. You can see the stump from the one we took down. Anyway, what else we got? Oh, here we go, here we go. I see the issue.
enough of a gap to get by. Fort lift at yard number two up here, so go and get that, get a grab on, clean up all the shrapnel. There's a few logs there, but it's really naughty stuff because it's got loads of wee branches coming off it. What was that, a fir? Fir tree? I don't know, I don't know my trees, but loads of bits coming off it, so there'll be loads of knots through it, so it's not the best stuff for cutting up. I'll need to move this camera because I had it mounted on the inside of the wheel. I'm going to drive off with that. You can see what it is, all that naughty stuff. What do you call this? What kind of tree is that? There's the rest of it. See where it's uprooted itself. Probably not the best idea to go in here when it's still blowing a hooli. And those other two next to it. Ah, oh, there you go. The main roots actually still kind of will still be in here in the ground. That's just snapped completely because it's rotten through. The dog's having a good time. Plenty space. And this pushed out of the way a bit so it's further away from the road because it'll probably just lie there for now. It's a bit swampy in here. Something on there. Dry out for a while. We're not the best stuff either. We now have an operating road. One more log to get up. It's like a swamp down here. Whoa. Should tire the dog out, hopefully. We've now got another demo coming, a Massey. They've obviously seen that we had a John Deere on demo as well, so they're trying to claim that the Fent will be coming in a similar price at a similar spec to the John Deere, trying to sell us a Fent, but no problem selling me a Fent, it's selling the boss a Fent who pays the bills. Also comes down to the service as well. So we know the ivory car, i.e. New Holland, we get good service there, we're happy with that. Um, everything's always quick, they come whenever you need, whenever we need them. Um, the same class um, sellers who sell the class tractors, we deal with them for the combine and the baler and service there, we're pretty happy with it, we get on well with them as well. So we know those two brands are fine. Rikis, we've never actually really dealt with them, um, so they're the, they're the Vultra, Massey um, and Fent. So that'd be a wee bit of, un, of, of an unknown and the same with the John Deere, we've never dealt with them before. Um, so that again is another bit of an unknown. It's sleety, miserable, horrible stuff. I found my knife getting these bales going, but just about done. Get under cover. I was out there for maybe two minutes. It is absolutely miserable. Howling down the rain. I've just been filling in some paperwork for the cattle for the last few while, sorting out a few things that I need to get sorted out. Got a bit of testing to do once I figure it all out properly. I'm getting there. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Like and subscribe. It's really dark and soaking and cold and wet and miserable and windy. Do you see the